I have decided to choose the Coca-Cola company as the brand I am going to present today as they are known for their great advertising and being amongst the most prolific brands in marketing history. I will be talking about the Coca-Cola company and using their most famous and well-known product, the original Coca-Cola. In this presentation, I will be giving a brief introduction to the organisation, including a little bit about their history as a brand, before mentioning their products, how they target customers and their market context, including their biggest competitors, PepsiCo. I will also be talking about consumer behaviour theories that the Coca-Cola company have used over recent years within learning and memory, perception, family and reference groups, and lifestyle value and culture theories. The Coca-Cola Company is an American multinational beverage corporation. They manufacture, retail and market non-alcoholic drinks made with concentrates and syrups. The company was founded on May 6, 1886 by a pharmacist named Dr. John Stiff Pemberton in Atlanta, Georgia in the USA. Coca-Cola is ranked the number one soft drink in the world. It has been voted repeatedly and internationally. It is also known for being the first soft drink consumed in space by astronauts. Everything about Coca-Cola is internationally recognisable. The logo, bottle design, colours, etc. Some even say Coca-Cola is the second international word spoken after OK. A lot has changed in 133 years. The Coca-Cola company hasn't stopped growing and expanding. Although they started with just one iconic drink, they now own a total beverage company. The company has over 500 different brands and 700,000 people employed to help deliver the beverages all around the world. Coca-Cola is sold in over 200 companies with only two major countries not selling the drink, or at least legally, which are Cuba and North Korea. They own brands ranging from Zico Coconut Water to Coffee at Costa Coffee, which is a recently acquired brand in 2019. The Coca-Cola company has several beverage categories including sparkling soft drinks, water and hydration, juice, dairy and plant-based drinks, coffees and teas. They have two product lines, carbonated and non-carbonated drinks, with many product types and hundreds of products. Their most known products are found within the sparkling soft drink category, where we can find Coca-Cola, Sprite, Fanta, Schweppes, etc. They also own brands such as Smart Water, Powerade, Minute Maid, Innocent, Costa Coffee, Fuse Tea and many, many more. When it comes to targeting consumers, many categories are taken into account, including age, gender, location, lifestyle and occupation, for example. Some would say Coca-Cola has no specific target market, as over the years we've seen advertising campaigns aimed for the younger generations, but also tailored for the elder. They don't have a specific target segment, but adapt their marketing strategies as we've seen when they develop new products for the targeted consumers. One age group they do not target is the under 12 year olds. They stopped extensive advertising to children and undisclosed nutritional information on what the Coca-Cola products in order to allow parents are saying what their children should be drinking after Coca-Cola Australia quoted in keeping with a long-standing policy, Coca-Cola Australia and its local bottling partners do not aim or direct any media marketing activities from any source to children under the age of 12. This intent of this policy is to impose limitations and conditions on marketing to children under 12 and to prevent interference with parental guidance with regard to diet. Coca-Cola's main consumer category can be placed in an age gap from the 12 to the mid-30s. This is the age group that the brand most successfully reaches through partnerships such as Coca-Cola. There is no gender-related issues with the brand as both genders use the products. Coca-Cola's lifestyle and occupation categories of consumers are orientated to younger generations, people on the move, with busy lifestyles, etc., especially students, for example, but they can also apply to family-orientated people. It's all about the refreshing, relaxing moment of having a Coca-Cola. According to the New York Times, Coca-Cola have been targeting health-conscious consumers with advertisements showing Coca-Cola life, diet and sugar-free products. The Coca-Cola company is in an oligopolistic market with their main competitors being PepsiCo. Both of these brands constitute the majority of the cola industry but have not agreed to fix prices or collaborate, which to be more specific makes the market a non-collusive oligopolistic market. Both organisations have one major product, known most globally for being Coca-Cola and Pepsi. In 2019, the Coca-Cola company had a net operating revenue of $37 billion, whereas PepsiCo's was $67 billion. 
PepsiCo is a larger company than Coca-Cola due to their products in other industries, but Coca-Cola definitely has the better brand value, as it's been proven as they rate ranked number 6 on the Forbes Most Valuable Brands compared to their competitors' place in 29. Next, we are going to discuss the consumer behaviour theories that Coca-Cola have used in their latest marketing and advertising campaigns. To begin with, we'll talk about learning a memory. The definition of a memory is a system and a process whereby information is received, organised and sorted. As the Coca-Cola company quotes, as a brand, we are constantly looking for ways to keep our work fresh, exciting and engaging to our consumers. We do this by tapping into everyday moments and telling universal stories that connect with our consumers around the world. There is a big importance of reminding people of the brand. Constant advertisement is needed even for the biggest of brands such as Coca-Cola. The main recent advertising campaign I would like to mention here is the collaboration with the Netflix series Stranger Things. It's a series based in the 1980s. Coca-Cola used a takeover style approach to its social media campaigns, including the reintroduction to the new Coke as we can see them holding it in this scene. It was a sweeter version of the Coca-Cola formula that was launched in 1985, which is known to have been the company's worst launch to date. As the Stranger Things third season was set in that year, Coca-Cola and Netflix collaborated in recognising the authenticity of the beverage that it could bring to the programme through product placement. Recognising how the series used the Coke would bring back a powerful nostalgia feeling to the brand, they decided to give their whole social media an 80s makeover with inspiring new posts about the season to come. They also brought up a pop-up arcade in, Lo in London, allowing customers and fans to feel part of the launch and create more memories with the brand to create this bonding feeling of nostalgia as fans were transported back to the set of the show. For each example of theory given, I will be comparing them to their main competitors, Pepsi. PepsiCo also uses nostalgia in their marketing as they brought back their well-known drink from the 90s, the Crystal Pepsi. The drink was discontinued as people were confused to why there was such a product as it was a cola but transparent. It was scientifically proven that customers were developing physical symptoms of anxiety as no one knew how to react to the product. Customers didn't know if it was healthy back in the day, but when Pepsi brought back their drink in 2016, it sold out and fast. Why? Because of the nostalgia feeling of the 90s. The American Marketing Association explained that consumers had built familiarity with the product. The drink was part of their past as people were calling it on Twitter. Next we have perception. Perception can be defined as the process in which physical sensations such as sights, sounds and smells are selected, organised and interpreted. In this part of the presentation, we will be discussing the perceptual process, including determinants that influence attention and sensory marketing, with examples taken from the Coca-Cola's advertising campaigns. Our perceptions start with our five senses, sight, smell, sound, taste and touch. The perceptual process goes through multiple stages, as we can see. We receive the information with our senses, which grabs our attention. We then interpret this information before coming up with our response. It could be good, bad or neutral. That's our perception of the brand or product. To summarise, we are exposed to information that grabs our attention, that we then proceed to sort and form our personal views and thoughts on the product slash brand in question. Such as this individual seeing a print advertisement for Coca-Cola, as we can see here. The determinants attracting attention to the Coca-Cola's brand are known globally. These include the basic red and white branding contrast, the fluid Coca-Cola writing logo and the Coca-Cola glass bottle, which is known to be one of the best known bottle shapes in the world. Here we can also mention when seeing pictures of Coca-Cola, how our memory reminds us of the freshness and the noise a can makes when first being opened. These are all the things the brand use in their advertisement that we see and attracts our attention. Here are a couple of examples of great interactive marketing products that Coca-Cola have used over the recent years. I'm sure we can all remember searching for our names when Coca-Cola brought out their Share a Coke campaign. This concept was to have people's names on Coca-Cola bottles, as Coca-Cola quoted they felt the company was becoming too familiar and too predictable in their strategies. It allowed them to create something new and bring a spark of joy to their consumers. The campaign started with more of a view to give someone a Coke as the names were Mum, Dad, Son, Daughter, etc, which allowed them to touch more of the population before they brought out more neutral personal names onto the market. Later on in the campaign you could also insert your own name onto the bottle, allowing customers to offer or to create the perf perfect bottle they wanted. It allowed Coca-Cola to speak to, to their customers at an eye level. 
The Coca-Cola bow bottles were another great example of creative thinking on their behalf. The label on these bottles once pulled in the right direction would form a bow. People reacted very positively to this concept as it was viewed as giving someone a Coca-Cola product as a Christmas gift, for example. The drinkable advert was part of a Coca-Cola Zero campaign called You Don't Know Zero Till You've Tried It, which debuted during a basketball tournament in the USA. The campaign was diffused on multi-channels as it was available to see on a gigantic billboard, but also through TVs. Consumers would receive either samples of the Coca-Cola Zero drink or a coupon allowing them a free bottle. The gigantic billboard was composed of a pumping system that poured the drink into a sampling station on the ground, which allowed an interesting visual but also a great sampling experience. They also made it into a multi-platform interactive advertisement due to their encouragement to make TV watchers use the Shazam applica application, which would show an image of a drink being poured from a bottle on their TVs into a glass on their phones. They would also redeem coupons or samples. The drinkable advertisement was a great way of removing all the barriers between consumers and product, but also the weight between perceiving the advert and actually trying the drink. Coca-Cola are excellent at developing great creative advertisements that get cost customers involved with the product even without having the product in their hands. Here they manage to get customers to have fun and experiment with the brand and their new concepts. The company wants customers to have fun, have a good time and just enjoy a Coke. It's a very uplifting and happy feeling brand. PepsiCo also uses sensory experiences in their advertising, as we can see with the use of their Pepsi Max Cherry Room that opened in London. They created a gastronomical adventure that explores the senses through different experiences in four rooms. They could even learn how playing with senses can alter taste experiences. The next topic we will be talking about is lifestyle, values and cultures. We will be focusing on the culture theories. To begin with, culture can be defined as an accumulation of shared meanings, rituals, norms and traditions amongst members of an organisation or a society. There are five steps in the decision-making process, the first being the need for recognition. The product or service needs to be seen for the consumer to pass it on to the future steps. Next we have the information search. What exactly is this product? Then we have the search to see if there's any other options. If deemed best, the consumer will purchase the item or service. And then we also have the consumer's post-purchase behaviours that also play a role. Culture is a concept learnt through social interactions such as family, school, peers and media. It's also shared by members of societies and can be transmitted through generations. For example, in the UK we celebrate Christmas, and in response to this Coca-Cola have Father Christmas in their advertisements, as we recognise and acknowledge that ideal, although in other parts of the world different cultures involve different values and rituals, such as Ramadan, which Coca-Cola have previously included in their past. As Coca-Cola is such a global company, they need to adapt their marketing and advertising concepts to each culture they target. This also brings into question the four P's, product, promotion, place and pricing. We'll be using Coca-Cola as a brand to analyse these aspects around the world from the brand's point of view. To begin with, the product is the same around the world. Coca-Cola is a soft drink beverage. It has the same ingredients and formula everywhere. The only reason it may taste different is because of the franchise bottling. Although, when it comes to the promotion of Coca-Cola, they are very inclusive in making sure their advertising is done in the correct language. They want to make sure their communications are adapted to the country, including slang or even catchphrases that don't always translate. For the distribution, as mentioned before, Coca-Cola is sold in over 200 countries. The only two major countries that they don't sell their product in is North Korea and Cuba, for historic reasons. When it comes to pricing, as we can see on the table put together by Business Insider, the price of Coca-Cola varies between all countries. This could be due to shipping or local tax fees. It's also appropriated to the local needs and demands. The most expensive place to buy a 2 litre bottle of Coca-Cola is in Norway, whereas in Turkey it's less than $1. As we can see here, Coca-Cola's rival competitors Pepsi are also implanted on their international markets. These cans have been sold in Asia as Pepsi are creating new challenges for themselves in aim to get China's youth involved in their packaging. They want new packaging designs that show visual identity, especially in China, and are creating illustrations that resonate emotionally, setting a new benchmark in the Chinese market with this collectible series. 
In May 2020, Pepsi announced they were putting their local culture and comfort at the heart of their MPD strategy in China, with the launch of the Osmathus flavoured soft drink, which is a flower plant, flower plant native to China used in teas and desserts. In the last segment of this presentation, we are going to be talking about family and reference groups, but focusing specifically on reference groups. To begin with, reference groups can be defined by an actual or imagery institution, individual or group conceived as having significant relevance upon individuals' evaluations, aspirations or behaviours. It can also be defined as those groups that are used by a person as a basis for, a basis for comparison and guidance when forming their beliefs, attitude and behaviours. Social media is the capability to alter the actions of others. We can also talk about brand power here, which is something that Coca-Cola is well known for. Coca-Cola have been taking a more social approach to their campaigns with the use of social media. Social media, which is nowadays only becoming greater and stronger, is a very valuable asset for companies such as Coca-Cola. Within the first three months of 2019, Coca-Cola generated 22.8 thousand mentions across social media platforms. 72% of these were coming from Twitter, where consumers would discuss the brand, content and favourite flavours and even talk about current issues such as environmental and sugar taxes. The volume of conversation around a brand or even their campaigns are good indicators to know if consumers are finding things interesting, but also helps to identify what consumers are finding displeasing or don't agree on. By analysing the volume of mentions about Coca-Cola on the internet, the company will be able to identify the consumer's most popular moments of consumption. Brand events and experiences can be used to increase awareness about new launches or about the brand. It gives the brand opportunities to interact with their audiences physically and encourage social media engagement through hashtags, which increases the share of voice online, also known as social power. Another great engagement for social power is sponsorships, such as Coca-Cola's partnership with Premier League, which had international coverage, which was their most discussed sponsorship, making 32% of their overall online engagements. We can also link social power to the concept of word of mouth, which can be described as a person-to-person -person communication where the person receiving information regarding a product, brand or service from a communicator perceives the information as non-commercial. There are two sets of word of mouth, organic meaning it happens naturally, or amplified which means marketeers are trying to get attention online. For example, Selena Gomez was paid over half a million dollars to post a picture on her Instagram with a bottle of Coca-Cola. To summarise, reference groups can occur either online or offline and have the ability to influence customers in different ways, especially those who possess social powers. Pepsi are known for using many different celebrities in their campaigns and to promote the brand. For example, Cardi B and Jim Carrey did the Super Bowl advertisement in 2018, where they actually also mentioned Coca-Cola as a brand at the beginning. But this can also backfire, as seen with the example of Kendall Jenner, where she hands a police officer a can of Pepsi during a protest. Consumers responded very negatively to this advertisement. To conclude, Coca-Cola have used and continue to use many consumer behaviour theories. They are very fond of using nostalgia in marketing. Coca-Cola creates an uplifting, happy and good life feeling perspective about the brand using sensory marketing as we've seen. The company is also global and adapts to all the cultures around the world and Coca-Cola uses many tools such as social media and word of mouth to interact with their consumers.